What are we doing today, Tessa? Oh, we're going on a search and recovery. What are we going for? Uh, glasses. Glasses again? Yeah. It's like everybody keeps dropping their glasses. Yeah, they really need to get Rio sunglasses. That's right, because why? They don't sing. That's right. But today, I think we're going after a pair of eyeglasses that a gentleman dropped. And we're going out here to this houseboat. And you might not recognize this houseboat, but you might recognize the location. Yes, I do. Right. This is the replacement for that big 40-foot houseboat that we salvaged for one of our slip customers, right? It didn't even sink. Uh, th we think somebody hit it. There was a big old hole in the side of the hole, but this is the replacement here. And we're going to jump in and see if we can find the glasses that he dropped right in front of it. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now I got my daughter Tessa with me again today and we're going out to do a search and recovery dive. We're gonna be in an overhead environment and it's gonna be kind of dark. So we're gonna need a good searchlight to do that. Well, lo and behold, I've got the Orca Torch D530V. This is a video light that Orca Torch sent us and we're gonna be using this light tonight or today to see how good it's gonna work as a searchlight. Now, now, if you're not familiar what's the difference between a standard light and a video light, video lights tend to be more of a flood light. That means they brighten up a, a real wide area versus a spotlight that just kind of punches through the muck. Being here in our lake, when we search, we kind of like video lights because it opens up the bottom to us versus just a spotlight that's going to reflect back. Now, this light's coming in around 1,200 looms, which is a little bit more than what I like for our turbid waters here. However, it's not gonna be that much more because I prefer around the 1000. Now, a couple other cool features about this, it does have a 140 beam angle here, or 140 degrees. It's got 1200 looms and it's about four and a half hours of runtime. Now that runtime is only gonna be on the low setting, which is 290, which we can dial it back if we need to. On the high setting, we're only get about an hour and a half. I really don't think this search and recovery is gonna take that. So we're gonna see how well this light works for the search and recovery. So what do you think, Tessa? We ready to jump in? Yeah. Getting you geared together? Yeah, I'm having we're... struggle, but I'm okay. Okay, think we're gonna have a successful search? Yeah. Awesome. Guys, we're gonna get geared up, we're gonna jump in. I'm actually gonna let her review the light and see what she thinks about it and see if it's gonna be good for search and recovery, which is what we do a lot of here in our lake. But let's jump in and we'll see how successful we can be. All right, guys, before we jump in, we're going to take a quick look at the D530V here from Orca Torch and just see what all comes in the box. This is going to allow us to really kind of go over everything and know a little bit more about this light before we get started. Looks like we got a little instruction manual there. Got a lanyard here. Looks like we got a ton of accessories. Uh, a couple extra accents there if we want to change them out. Looks like it does come with two batteries, and they are the USB rechargeable batteries, which is pretty cool. Um, they are 18650s, which is very common in dive lights today. And another cool thing is we can use any 18650, so I really like that as well. There's our little charger, our USB charger, which is neat. Um, looks like we have spare O-rings here. And we also have the light holder itself. This is a ball mount. Um, that we can mount on cameras and stuff like that, which video lights, that's really what they're designed for. We use them for search and recovery a lot just because they work great down on the bottom. The light itself appears to be some type of analyzed aluminum there. Um, it is a push button. It looks like it's got a little indicator light here that's going to kind of let you know if the battery's charged or not. That's pretty cool as well. Um, just twist shaft here. And we'll go ahead and stick one of these batteries in. Now, I don't know if these batteries are charged. If they're not, it's not a big, big deal because I got ton of these 18650s we can throw in one of these just for today's search um, it does look like it's a three o-ring seal which is cool get a little bit of hair or something off there but it's already pre-lubed up for us which is cool and like i said it does have three o-rings there which i prefer on any type of light that's got a twist head on it like this that it has three o-rings just to be extra uh, safe here i'm gonna say that's gonna be the 1200 looms there there's the 240 or the low looms and of course it goes off as well. So I really think this is gonna be a great light for this search today. What do you think, Tessa? Do you want the lanyard or you do want it? Okay, so we're gonna put the lanyard on for real quick and then we're gonna jump in the water and see if we can find the gentleman's glasses. All right, Tessa, so I'm gonna set you up a reference line to help you be successful on this search. 
The gentleman said as he was working here on his boat, he leaned over and his glasses came off his shirt and fell into the water. So we're gonna set up a reference point so that once we get up underneath the dock, you will know exactly where you're at because as we descend, just like an object, it can move as well. Now, if we're dealing with 15 foot of water, what's our search radius gonna be? 15 feet. 15 feet, that's right. Now, since we are gonna be up under the dock and we're not gonna have a lot of ambient light, we're gonna have to use flashlights, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's also think about real quick, what type of search pattern do you think is going to work best? A jack stay, maybe a sweep, or a circle? Which one would you use up underneath this dock area? I'd use a circle because of this pole, it can help us out. Right, so we can attach a reel to the pole underneath the water, and we can use it as our pivot point to search around that 15-foot radius. Does it make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. All right, you ready to drop this in? Yes. All right, let's see if we can drop it in. And actually, we could either use this as well as that reference point, but I think we'll tie off to the pole once we're down there. This is just going to be so that we can see exactly where we're working underwater. We can also use this to verify our depth. Okay. Has it stopped? Yep, it stopped. And then, of course, if we needed to, we can measure. But we've dove here a bunch, so we know it's about 15 foot. So what we'll do is once we jump in... We'll go down this line, we'll do just a kind of an initial search, and then if we have to, we'll swim over to the pole and tie off to it and do a circle search around that. Sound good? Sound good. Let's go get some gear on. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so I decided to let Tessa come on camera and actually commentate this video for us just so that we, so you can see it from her point of view and let her kind of explain what she's doing. And I also wanted her to give her opinion on the Orca Torch D530 video light here. Um, I feel like sometimes when companies send us lights like this to test, yeah, we are dye professionals. We use things like this all the time. But I feel like even giving you an honest opinion is still going to be a biased opinion based off what I sell or what I use. So I want her to give her honest opinion on it because she is a new diver. And several of the things that I'm going to ask her throughout the video is, first of all, did it work? Number two, how easy was it to work? And number three, are there any improvements or what do you think about the accessories and things like that? Because she's not going to have the same biased opinion that I will as a dive professional. But Tess, you ready to jump into the video itself and kind of walk everybody through what it was we were doing? Mm -hmm. Cool. So I'm going to hit play here and I just want you to kind of start telling them what it is we're doing. Sound good? All right. So it's playing. So right here, we're at the dog getting ready. We've got our mask and we're putting on our fins. I'm kind of having problems, but okay. And we're getting ready to go out to the big house boat where the gentleman lost his glasses. Right, and so what are some of the things that we're discussing before we get out there? We're discussing how we're um, going to go down into the water without stirring up the bottom. And in case we can't find the glasses where he said they were, then we'll use a like circle a circle search. Right, so we kind of agreed that we was going to do a circle search. Explain to everybody what a circle search is. A circle search is where your buddy or a pole, well if you do it with your buddy, your buddy will stay in a, in a place holding one end and you'll hold the other. You'll make a circle and your buddy will turn until you stop at the place you began and he'll, your buddy will land up some Let stuff. some line out. Yep. But if you do it with a pole, it's like that, except the pole doesn't move and you'll have to get the line yourself. Right, you'll have to let the line in and out. So, what are we, we're fixing to go into an overhead environment here, right? Mm -hmm. And with overhead environments, we don't have very much ambient light. That means there's no light coming from the surface. Mm -hmm. nope. So, when you do searches like this, it is very important that you use some type of light source, right? Yeah. And, and we prefer, in our lake, what, about a thousand loom light? Yes. I think this one's coming in around the 1200, so it's about an extra 200 looms. Um, but we're going to see how well it does on this video because with video lights, they're more of a flood light. They, they have a very wide beam. They flood the whole... They do. They flood the area versus a spotlight that's just going to punch out through there. And in our lake, we're, we don't really need that, that spotlight, so to speak, because we don't have that much visibility, right? But here we are at the docks, and we've got a couple of hazards here. Not only is the overhead environment, we've got to get in between the docks and the boats just to get over to our, so our to reference line. Dock, to That's right. So I'm just, I think I'm here, I'm just giving you some final instructions. We're getting your light turned on. And I noticed you're using the lanyard just like you got it there now, right? And it does come with the lanyard. Um, 
with it being a video light, and we showed you the uh, the attachment to where you can attach it to a camera earlier, um, I like the fact that they do send a lanyard with it. So if you want to use it as a searchlight, which is what we're doing, you can do that as well. Now, obviously, I'd probably just tie on a bolt snap to it, but that lanyard came in very handy for her as well. She could just lanyard it to her wrist, and um, that way she wouldn't lose it while we were doing right the search. Right now we're fixing to go under the dock to get to the place we need to be. All right. And that was cool you did the reach method to get your reg there. Did you notice that? Yeah. It's one of the skills you learned in open water. So we're going to go up underneath the dock here. And a lot of people ask, do y'all take dive flags when you're out here in open water? We do. In this situation where we're going to be up underneath the dock, we, we don't even worry about it. You could put it on the boat up above you, but there's where we're at, there's not going to be boats where we're at, yeah, let so alone the ones on top. Can see the dive flag. Right, so no one would really be able to see a flag, especially searching an overhead environment. It's kind of hard to drag that flag with you as you go up underneath it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to head over here to the line, and if you would explain to everybody how we make our descent. So when we get over to the line that we need to go down to get the glasses, we're going to turn upside down and go head first, or we're going to start off the bottom. That's right. So as soon as we get underwater, we get our neutral buoyancy underway, we're going to go ahead and go head first down. That way our fins are not touching the bottom as we come down to the bottom. Um, and we can kind of control the line. Let's talk a little bit about the line what we don't want to do with it. Oh, we're getting to the line now. So what are we all looking for? Glasses. We're looking for the glasses. Well, let's talk about that line. What do we not want to do as we're making a descent with the line? Do not pull the line going up or down or you're going to move. You're going to move the weight, yeah. right? And that weight's our reference point. Once we get down there, we know that's where we want to start our search pattern, whatever search pattern that we're doing. So it looks like we're getting to the bottom. Yep, there's the bottom. And I think you spotted the glasses before me, which was pretty funny. Yeah, I did. I, I actually got them on camera before she found them. <laughs> But uh, we're getting kind of set up how we want to do it. We're making sure that we're both neutrally buoyant. Um, and you can see that's a very bright light. It's 1200 lumen light shining right on the camera, but it's a very wide beam. So when she shines it on the ground or the bottom there, it's going to be able to search a wide area versus just that spotlight area. So I'm kind of accidentally stirring up the bottom by accident because I don't know why I can't stay neutral buoyant. I just... You got too much weight on. We need to ditch some weight. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we can see the glasses. But you can kind of see how, how bright that light is, and it kind of opens it up. It's a very wide beam. You want to tell them the problem, Dad, that happened afterwards? Uh, Not really, should we? Yeah. All right, so we actually found these glasses twice. Um, well, you found them the first time. I found them the second time. Yeah. So why don't, why don't we let you tell them what happened here? <laughs> okay, so um, when we got back in the water, you see him in my hand right now, and um, when we got back in the water, I decided to piggyback my dad. Well, first of all, let's tell him why we went back down underwater. Why did we go back underwater? We needed to get some B-roll footage yeah. for the light, right? And so after all this was done, we decided we were going to go make about a 10, 15 minute dive, and I could just get some footage of her using the light, and I wanted to get different angles. So as we're descending back down, she decides that she wanted to do what? Piggyback you. She was going to piggyback me. And if you don't know what piggybacking is, it's basically where a kid will ride on someone's back, like their mom or dad's back. So in back mount, all she'll do is just kind of ride on my tank, and she'll hold the tank valve, and I'll, I'll pull her around. It's what we actually did when you were six years old, when we first taught you how to dive. But in side mount, she'll just grab the hold of the bladder of my BC, and she can kind of lay flat on my back because my tank's are on my side. Yeah. Well, she decided that she was going to piggyback me. And as we're swimming along, I can feel her. I can feel the drag as I'm swimming. And I really needed to get some footage of this for the review. I don't think I was trying to piggyback you. I was trying to, like, stay up so I got on top of you to, like, get us. So you would be on the bottom, yeah. yeah. So while she's piggybacking me, I decided that I was going to wave her off of me like this so that she could come over the top I and I could get some footage of her, right? I didn't understand what you were trying to say, but then, yeah. Yeah. So you swam off of me and what happened? Glasses got stuck in your BC. Right. She didn't realize that she had dropped the glasses and they got stuck between my tank valve and the back of my neck. Well, I couldn't feel it because I had a wetsuit on, right? So I had no clue they were there. So as I'm... Filming her using the light, and, you, and I'll go back and I'll play the video here for you so you can see it. You can see the glasses in her hand 
as we go down. He turns to the side right. near the sea dew. And then as we're swimming, you can see the flashlight in her hand. Mm -hmm. You can see her other hand is empty as well. There's no glasses. So what had happened was they got stuck between my tank valve and my neck. And as we're swimming along and I'm filming, neither one of us realized we lost the glasses that we just found. So as we're swimming out through our, our playground area there in the lake, as I'm rolling my body to record her with a camera, they slid out from the back of my tank and valve fell and, and fell. Right, so they fell right up. We've got a sea dew that sunk out here, and they fell out from there. Well, when we get to the sea dew, I decided I wanted her to swim around, use the flashlight yet again so that we could get some footage of it, some B-roll footage, and I realized she's not got the glasses in either hand. So I'm asking her underwater. I'm like, hey, where's the glasses? And she's like, I don't know. So we had a little issue with the light during the search. The runtime on the high beam is about an hour and a half. And after an hour and a half of searching again for the glasses, the light dies. So it's not anything bad against the light, but we ran it to its max with a full battery. And of course the light died on us. But we did end up finding them again, didn't we? Yeah. So what do we do? We don't piggyback. And when you do a search and recovery like this, guys, let me give you a little bit of advice. Find the object you're looking for, come straight up, put it on land. Don't take it back underwater with you because you're liable to lose it again. Yeah. But let's kind of end the video with your review of the light. The Orca Torch D530V light, what did you actually think about it? I thought it was pretty cool, especially the button because the twist ones I have problems with. I always have to have you do it. So we got, oh, it's dead. No, oh, we took the battery out. Oh. <laughs> So we got like a high mode where it's really bright, then if you click it twice, low mode, and then you click it one more time, hold it down, boom, it's off. Turns it off, right. And so <laughs> with what she was saying there, the twist lights, she has a little difficulty twisting the lights. I personally like them, but with her still being small, it's kind of hard for her to turn that light. This just has a single push button here. It's even got a little uh, indicator to let you know if it's on or off. But the high beam, the 1200 high beam, runs for about an hour and a half. I think the low beam's coming in at 290 uh, lumens, and it's going to run for about four hours. So for a search light, for what we use it for here in our lake, I think it's going to be an absolutely great search light. As far as a video light goes, I like the fact that they send the attachment for your camera system um, because that's going to make it a lot easier going ahead and attaching it to whatever. But it would work good for a video light too, right? Yes, it would. Exactly. So with the batteries, it does come, or at least this one came with two batteries here, and it does come with a USB charger, which is really cool as well. So all in all, what would you say? A, a, a zero to a five, zero being bad, a five being really, really good, what would you rate this like? A hundred. A hundred. I kind of like that agree too. So guys, if you want this lot, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we will be giving this lot away in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Um, typically, the way we do giveaways, first of all, you got to be a subscriber, you got to like the video, and you got to comment on the video. But what we do is we try to make these giveaways educational. So in a future video, I'm going to be asking you a question. All you've got to do is put down in the comment section below the answer to that question, and then we will take all the correct answers, we'll pull them, we'll do a just a random name generator to pull a name out of the hat, if you will, and that person will get the lot. So stay tuned in the future, we're going to be giving this lot away. I do want to thank Orca Torch for sending us this light. I think it's a great light for what it is. Um, not real sure on the price of these because most of these Orca torches you've got to pick up on Amazon. But I'll try to find you a link down below where you can click on that link and purchase one of these if you want to. But yeah, I think it's a great light. It's a great search light. It'd probably make a good light for a helmet as well where you didn't really need to cut out through the, the muck. You just needed to see what was right in front of you. But yeah, go ahead. So, if you want to, instead of going down to the link to purchase your own and have to spend your money... Just wait till the contest so you don't have to lose your money. That's if they win. Yeah, right. if they win, if they win. But guys, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Once again, thanks Orca Torch for the light. Um, I think it's a great light. Hopefully a diver in the future is going to be able to use this for video or search and recovery purposes. But uh, guys, if you did like this video, if you want to see more content with Tess in it, give me a big thumbs up. Drop me a, down, a comment down below. If you want to see these interview style videos, let us know. We'll, we'll try to make more for you. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. <laughs>